I just got potentially the biggest opportunity I ever have in my entire life. So I'm going to go through how I'm going to break this down, what my game plan is, and what we're going to go moving forward. First, I'll just read it. I'm actually looking to bring in a hands-on creative director to own all socials from creation to strategy and distribution for myself and my wife, $300,000 per year compensation, base plus bonus. And the other part was a bit more personal that I can't reveal. This was sent to me by my friend who is recommending me to this person because I use his services for parts of my business. And this person is my ideal clientele. My exact clientele that I look for is someone who's making a few million dollars per year from their business, ideally a massive business, someone like Ken, who I already work for, who has a $3 billion business and already has a pretty developed social media. I help them grow it with the goal of getting more customers, but mainly just grow it to the maximum potential degree. That is working exceptionally well for me. And so this person, they just sold their company for $110 million and their goal is to grow all their social medias to bring a lot more brand awareness for themselves. As of right now, I've not talked to this person. I'm not gonna reveal their name yet, but I'm gonna go over how I plan on getting this person as a client because I just got the introduction. So me and this person are gonna set up and call to go forward. So here's how I go about a overall strategy. If you're in a business meeting, you prepare for it. And because this is such a big opportunity, $300,000 a year plus bonus is really incredible. <laughs> uh, it is, that, that is really remarkable. That would take my business to the next level. I would be able to expand a team. I'd be able to do a lot of cool things with that. So I'm going to go over how, how I'm breaking this down and how I think through these types of things, because this person wants a strategy. So for me to accomplish a strategy, I need to know things within this person. Like it's not just me trying to convince them why they should work for me. Even though I want this client really bad, the dynamic of the relationship still has to be, I am qualifying them to work with me. That, that is always how you have to approach these types of situations. So these are questions that I need answered if I want to take them on. How many hours a week do you want to commit to filming? Because with Ken, he only filmed for one to two hours per week. I do all of the pre-planning. I tell him exactly what he's going to say. I do all of the pre-production. He doesn't even know what he's going to talk about when he comes into the office. And so if that is the same way this person is, I need to know that. If he wants to spend more time, great, then I can pre-plan, but then he's going to have to do some pre-planning as well. How much time does he want to record? That is a very important question for at least for me. Who would be your ideal avatar that you want watching your videos? The reason for this is... This guy keeps on saying on his videos, I'd never heard of him before. I've seen his videos recommended to me, but I've never actually watched one. So I was watching some of his videos and he's repetitively saying, I never want to sell anything. My entire goal is to grow this. So I need to know, is his ideal avatar his younger self? Is it, is it the younger generation or is it business owners? Because does he eventually want to turn this into the business? Which kind of leads to the next question. What is the end goal objective? Why do you want views? Is it just to fulfill some desire that you have to educate the world or what you wish you had? Or do you want to potentially turn this into a massive business in the future? Because that is uh, a very different for how you structure videos. If you want the maximum amount of views, that is different than targeting high net worth individuals who are potentially going to pay you money. And then what is the key metric you would use for success? Is it views, subscribers, emails? This will also depend on the end goal. And so this all depends on the strategy that we are going to implement onto his social medias. Why am I so confident that I will at least get this client? One, because I am tailoring his wants, desires, and needs into a, a strategy. I am developing a strategy specifically for him based upon his goals. All, actually, all of my clients' goals are different. And knowing that and knowing what kind of business owner someone is and what their personality type is, is wildly important when you are doing business for them. Because I know what most business owners want because I am a business owner. They want the best possible results for the least headache, the least amount of time, effort, and management that they want. So I am now irreplaceable to someone like Ken because Ken does not, his time spent on his social medias has gone down to 
The only thinking he does for it is when he's recording, for the most part, some videos I make him pre-plan a little bit. So his time has gone from, let's say, 10 hours per week, which it probably wasn't. It was probably, let's say, seven hours per week down to about two hours per week. And for someone like that, five hours per week is a drastic amount, especially when his results have gone from 200,000 views per month to 2 million views per month. And the revenue that we are generating is unreal. So depending on what your goals are, because Ken's goal is, is time and results, that is what most people's are going to be. So when you know the type of avatar that this client is, you can tailor their needs to you. Maybe he wants to be really hands-on on these projects because this is a passion project for his. Uh, that would be different. It's especially if when you want the whales, you have to treat them like that. You don't treat them like other clients. The fact that this person is starting off with a base salary of $300,000 per year plus bonuses, uh, you know that there's a lot of wiggle room in the future to make a lot of money and there's a lot of opportunity here. Ken always says you just don't make money or you don't learn anything when you're making money because when you're making money, you think everything's going great because you're great. And because him and George and everyone successful that I talk to always says these kinds of things, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing is how do I make it a hundred thousand times better? When I'm thinking of a business model, I, I'm really looking for what is the value of the customer that I have? And then how can I provide something that is so ridiculously incredible that they want it forever and they want a hundred times more of it. They want to recommend it to every single one of their friends. And the perfect example of this is one of my friends, Todd Davis, who founded LifeLock. And when I was talking to him, I was asking him, so what was the lifetime value of one of your customers? How long when, when someone signed up for LifeLock, which was a monthly subscription model to prevent you from getting your identity stolen, how long until they would cancel? Because I know a guy who runs a company that it's pretty, well, not a similar company, but a concept, mm -hmm. a concept, concept similar. Yeah. And I was sitting in one of his meetings. He was so strict with talk time. And I, I didn't know why it was a thing. I was assuming because you want your, if maybe the well, customer think about, won't close. Well, but think about what they're doing. What he's decided is I invest this much money. I'm not willing to spend more because I don't get enough return. Yeah. You're measuring the wrong thing. Yeah. Right, because if you couldn't sell in the time you need it, your value props out right. It's not your talk time people, mm -hmm. right? Because by the way, when you do that, they start cutting corners and people aren't as educated, they're gonna have a bad experience. Our people could cancel any time they wanted. And I mean, we lost 5% of our customer years because they, they passed away because they were older. Yeah. We only lost like three or four percent of our entire customer base the rest of the time. Wow. Our average customer tenure was almost 10 years when I left. And I oh my only, God. And I was only there 12. Just to give you an Jeez, idea. Jeez, I've never heard of a company with that high of a, of a customer retention. It's ridiculous. So it's the product that needs better for everybody. Correct. And yeah. then once the product's great, and, and by the way, I told you, you can leave anytime. Yeah. You weren't locked in. You got, I'll give yeah. you a pro red refund. Yeah. You don't like it? Leave us. When you create a business model that is so good that people go back forever. When I'm thinking about it, like what brands do people go back forever? The, the, uh, people who start drinking Coca-Cola, they drink it forever. People drink their same beer forever. When I'm thinking of how do you create a business that is so ridiculously needed and forever implemented and they never want to use anything else because you relieve whatever pressure or tension that you put you have that that is what i want I, i've been in the business model be, in the past of continuously needing your next customer when you have a even like a b to b plus business and, and that, that is wildly overstating what i had it was probably like a negative f f minus but when you have a business model that relies on a lot of churn, because that just means your business is not that good. And so I'd rather work with very, very select few people who are my exact avatar and make a lot of money from that, at least for now, while I'm trying to figure out the business model that I think actually solves a super real world problem, which I know I'm not going to do at 21 years old. But the, the people that I take on as, as clients, they have solved those types of models. This guy had a massive technology company that I'm potentially taking on as a client. Ken has 10,000 real estate units. He has 300 plus employees. He runs his entire company in under nine. He runs his entire company in 90 minutes per week. That makes 
tens of millions of dollars per month or his 10,000 tenants average rent in the US is about 1500 bucks a month. What is that? $15 million per month. If that's the average rent, if it maybe it's a thousand bucks per month for rent, I don't know what it is. It's around $10 million per month. Obviously that's not all profit. It's a very small percentage of profit, but even if it's 10% profit on $10 million, you're doing pretty well for yourself there. And so these types of things are wildly overwhelming to me. Like today I was just sitting down thinking how ridiculously overwhelming this is. But my buddy, Justin, he just always reminds me, Josh, how do you eat an elephant? You eat it one bite at a time. And so none of these people built these massive empires overnight. And it is ridiculously stressful, ridiculously overwhelming. But at the same time, it is so exciting. It is, <laughs> it really pushes yourself to the limit to see what can you actually accomplish. And I think this next potential client, I'm, I, in an uneager way, I'm very optimistic that I'm going to close them just because I know that my skill set is exactly what they need. <laughs> uh, and I know that I would do an exceptional job for this person. I'm writing down every single thing that I think they're doing wrong, why I think it's wrong, what I think they can do to improve it, and then fixing it right now. And then coming up with, 10 different ideas that I think they should start doing right now. Here's the structure that it would look like. So I'm basically just starting work. Uh, I mean, that's how you really close a client. Uh, so that this is just the first part, which is asking them what strategy they want. And I already have a basic idea about what I think they want are going to say, but this from a perception standpoint is making them qualify themselves to you. And at the, at the same time, I just want to know what their goals are or how can I actually help them? And then me, taking the effort beforehand, before ever even talking to this person and doing all the work. I, I mean, that, that is exactly what these types of people want. The last time I was in a really big meeting with Ken and another person for a company that we were uh, really helping with, I prepared for an hour beforehand. I spent the hour preparing for what I thought this the goal of this should be, how the, the strategy that should be implemented and what steps need to be taken, what the payroll is gonna look like. I, I knew that these were the questions that they wanted answered and what they wanted from this meeting. So I just did it all beforehand instead of trying to think it through real time because that makes you appear to be a lot smarter than you are, just a little bit of preparation. But also it just saves time. And I know that these people care about their time so much. So just don't waste these people's time. And, and then it's, it's actually really quite easy. And then they want to spend time with you. And then you learn all these super, super, super cool business knowledge every single day. And so now I'm surrounded by all these amazing people, but just don't waste their time. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm really nervous about taking on this kind of work. It, it's also exciting, overwhelming. Every single feeling I think you could potentially have. PJ, who we are going to be working every hour of the day if we do somehow manage to get this, which we're already doing right now. <laughs> yeah. So, so right now we're like a, probably like a six out of 10 on the grind scale. This would take it to like a nine out of 10, but I, I, what, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, I think, I think it's a great opportunity. You got it. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, th this is, this is how we will really take the business to the next level. And, We'll see what happens.